Hey, a friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day 27 in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel website, where I'll help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to become an expert, fully comfortable and capable to get right down to making awesome music and this amazing application. Today, let's dig into Flex Pitch, which is Logic Pro's pitch correction system that allows you to adjust and correct the pitching of your recorded audio on a note-by-note -note basis. At the time of this video, Flex Pitch works best with monophonic signals, or to put another way, a single voice or tone that's performing one note at a time. A typical example of a monophonic signal would be a lead vocal track featuring a single vocalist performing, as opposed to polyphonic signals, which are multiple voices and tones performing more than one note at a time. So think of a guitar strumming a chord or a choir. So again, at the time of this video, Flex Pitch works best with monophonic signals, not so great with polyphonic. Just as we did in video 26 with Flex Time, we can go up to the top of the tracks area to the show hide flex button and click to reveal some flex functionality and options within each track header of our audio tracks. So again, we can see this gray button that allows us to enable or disable flex for each individual audio track. We also have a drop down menu from which we can choose between the six different flex time modes as well as enable flex pitch. One thing I didn't mention in yesterday's video though, is if we go to the track inspector section of the inspector and click to reveal, if we select an audio track, we have this option to enable a flex mode right from the track inspector without ever having to actually show flex in the tracks area. So let's do that right now. I'm going to click on the drop down menu in the track inspector and let's choose to enable flex pitch for our vocal track. Once selected, Logic Pro will go through a process of not only analyzing transient information in your recorded audio, but also for any pitch information as well. And as you can see, there's been a change visually to the individual regions on our vocal track. So let's start to zoom in on these regions. As we start to zoom in, we're seeing this gridded view within each region. If we zoom in closer, we also see these individual blocks that look a lot like MIDI note events. Each of these blocks represents the pitch or note of the performance. And we can also see a line that's tracing along and through the individual notes of our flex pitch data. This line represents pitch variations through each note. We can see the original waveform of the performance in the background. And depending on our view, if we squash things up a bit, I'm gonna use command and the up arrow. And at a certain zoom level, the view changes from that of individual notes along a grid to this view of individual bars representing each note. The center of the audio region represents that of perfect pitch. Any bars that extend downwards from the center position represent notes that are flat, while bars that extend upwards from the center line represent notes that are sharp. All right, from here, let's take a listen to our vocal performance, and then we'll start to dig into editing with flex pitch. Here we go. I don't ever open my mouth In this tiny Okay, there's a couple lines. Let's extend our view to this third line here that we'll focus in on. And again, at this particular view, we see these individual bars for each individual note. If we click, hold, and drag on any individual bar, we can adjust the pitching of that note. The closer we bring the bar to the center of the region, the closer we are to perfect pitch. All right, we've now applied 100% pitch correction to this one note. We can also double click on a note to automatically set that note to 100% pitch corrected. Or if we want to apply this across every note across the region, we can just right click or hold control and click to set all to perfect pitch. All right, so now this entire performance has been pitch corrected. We can also right click or hold control and click to set everything back to original pitch or reset all pitch corrections that we've made. If we zoom in closer, once again, I'm using command and the down arrow this time to zoom in. We now get a lot more detail and control over our pitch data. If we hover our mouse over a flex pitch note until we see this open hand icon, we can click, hold, and then drag the note through different semitones. Once again, we can double click on a note to set it to 100% pitch corrected. We can select multiple notes to edit or correct. Again, if we right click or hold control and click, we can set all to perfect pitch. 
or reset all edits. And you may notice that we have these individual handles or hotspots for each note with which we can impact other aspects of each note. In the top row, starting from the center, we have the option to adjust the pitching of this note on a finer basis. So instead of moving the note from semitone to semitone, we can adjust this note in terms of sense. If we click, hold, and drag on this hotspot, in the upper left-hand corner, we can adjust the pitch drift or the way the performer entered into the note. In the upper right-hand side, we can adjust the pitch drift leading out of the note. Bottom center, we have the ability to adjust the vibrato. Bottom left-hand side, we can adjust the gain or the level of each note. In the background, you can see that the waveform is expanding to represent that change in level to this note. In the bottom right-hand corner, we have the ability to adjust the form and shift. All right, so we've now made a number of different changes. We don't know if they're good changes. So once again, I'll right-click and reset all the changes I've made. Cool, so we can apply all of this across multiple regions. I can just set everything to perfect pitch. We're back to the original pitch. or we'll reset all. And while it's really handy to be able to work with flex pitch within the tracks area here, I personally prefer to work with flex pitch in the audio track editor. So let's open the editor by selecting our audio regions or track, and then going up to the scissors button in the control bar and clicking. But of course you could always use key command E to open and close the editor, or we could double click on a region. When I double clicked on the region, the focus changed from that of the audio track editor to that of the audio file editor. So let's switch the view back. And there we have it. We have our audio region with our flex pitch data. If you don't see your flex pitch data in the audio track editor, you may have to show flex in this editor as well by clicking on the show hide flex button. All right, so we're gonna navigate over to bar 41 to start making some edits. All right, so let's select all the notes in this particular line. And let's double click once again to set every note to 100% pitch corrected. We can see that the pitch correction slider in the left-hand side here in the inspector in the audio track editor has been set to 100%. This provides you another way of adjusting pitch for your selections. Just like with the piano roll, we have a piano roll scale along the left-hand side, which is really handy for identifying individual notes across a chromatic scale. Just like with MIDI, we can also set a time quantize value to adjust the timing of the individual notes of our performance. So we can select maybe an eighth note value. All right, we've seen some shifting around. I'm gonna leave this set to off. And we can also set a scale quantize for the notes in our performance. So I happen to know that this particular song is an E flat major. And a note at the end of the performance has been moved to match that of our scale. Let's try changing the scale altogether. All right, so we've seen more changes. Cool. So I'm gonna set this all back. Let's take a listen to our performance from here with everything set to 100% pitch corrected and to this scale. In this tiny little house. Thankfully, our vocalist was not too far out in any direction. We do have some funny business going on with this note right here. While setting the pitch correction to 100% corrected can be helpful to more clearly hear if a note is in the scale or is out. You generally don't want to set this to 100% unless you're going after some sort of special creative effect. So let's set this to about 70%. And let's take a listen again. In this tiny little house. All right, so the two notes that are really sticking out to me are right up here, as well as right here. With this note right here, we're getting some vibrato action going on. It's going up and down, and we can see it's drifting down as well. So we could play with vibrato to kind of tighten up the action of the vocalist. As well as adjust the pitch drift in and out of the note. Let's hear how that sounds. In this tiny little... That sounds a little sharp, so let's adjust the fine pitch. In this tiny little... All right, and with this second note here, we got a little more action going on. 
If we adjust the vibrato once again, we can adjust that drifting. We can adjust the pitch drift. And you may notice that the tracing line of the pitch variation seems to be going up away from this note right here. And it may very well be a completely separate note. So let's go up to our mouse tools. And from here, let's select our scissors tool. I'm gonna hold command to switch to my command click tool and click to separate this drifting section from the rest of the note. And if we double click, we set it to perfect pitch. Let's take a listen. In this tiny little house. Okay, so a lot better from here. If we decided the opposite, that a couple of notes really belong together and not separate, we could select those notes and instead use the glue tool to glue them together. Okay, so I'm gonna undo. Let's go ahead and adjust the gain of this note to make it a little louder. Maybe by 2 dB. Or we could choose to change our mouse tool as well to that of the volume tool. Pretty cool. As well, we have an independent vibrato tool if you prefer not to work with the individual hotspots. I personally find the hotspots easier, so I like to keep my command click tool when working with flex pitch to the scissors tool so I can split up notes as needed. Form and shift can be really helpful if you move a note quite far away from its original position. For example, if we move this note and take a listen, or if we go in the downward direction, and you can see because of the scale quantized, the note is locking to that of each note in the scale. So we take a listen again. All right, so that sounds definitely weird and not intended. Well, we can play with form and shift to adjust the tonality to sound a little more natural. Or move it up. It definitely takes some work to see what will work if you're making extreme adjustments, but form and shift is there for you if you need it. And if we hover our mouse over the boundaries of individual notes, we can pull and stretch the notes just like we can with flex time. What's also really cool about flex pitch is that you can actually extract MIDI information from this flex pitch data. If we go up to edit in the audio track editor and go down to create MIDI track from flex pitch data and click, let's close the editor by pressing key command E. Well, look at that. We now have an instrument track with a third party instrument in this case, but I'm going to create an instance of perhaps the vintage electric piano. We'll set the output. If we solo, our piano track, take a listen. Let's go in here. Uh, I can see that the velocity was set to one. Let's take a listen now. And look at that, we've now generated an electric piano performance from the flex pitch data of our vocalist. Some fine tuning may be necessary of the MIDI notes, but a really helpful option. Lastly, if you ever have issues of flex pitch, maybe not being able to figure out the notes of a performance or just misplacing them or whatever the case may be, it's worth knowing that under the edit menu, right in the audio track editor, we can choose to have Logic reanalyze the audio for flex editing. Logic will reanalyze the audio and any corrections I've made have been reset. So I suggest if you're having issues, do this a couple of times to see if it helps out. And there you have it. The pitching of recorded audio is no longer set in stone thanks to Logic Pro's Flex Pitch. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more next week in our Newbie to Ninja series. Take care.